This lecture will discuss basic techniques utilized in immunology research. It will cover isolation of immune cells, flow cytometry, and ELISA. It will also discuss how data is analyzed and offer some examples of data obtained by these techniques. This lecture is ideal for undergraduate, graduate, and medical students studying immunology or other related fields. Upon completing this lecture, you should understand how immune cells are isolated from other cells. You will become familiarized with antibody binding as a method to label cells and proteins. You will be introduced to the basic principles of flow cytometry. Lastly, you should understand how ELISA and related assays work. Before beginning, we will discuss some definitions. An antibody is a protein produced by B cells from the host immune system that binds to specific antigens. An antigen is a foreign protein that induces an immune response in the host. A single antibody can recognize only one specific antigen. However, since an antibody has two arms, it can bind two antigens simultaneously. There are several different antibody isotypes in humans and other animals. Most isotypes are found as monomers, or only one unit. As each of these monomers has two arms and combine two antigens simultaneously. One type of antibody, IgM, is found as a pentamer, which has five units. Since each unit has two arms, there are a total of 10 antigen binding sites on this isotype. This section will discuss the isolation of immune cells. In order to adequately study the function of a given immune cell type, we must be able to isolate that cell type from other extraneous cells. Most immune cells used in research are obtained either from the blood or the spleen. There are immune cells found in other organs, such as the Peyer's patches of the intestine. As shown in the figure below, mammalian blood is comprised of approximately 55% plasma and about 45% red blood cells. This means that the white blood cell fraction, or buffy coat, the fraction containing immune cells, makes up less than 1% of the blood. The buffy coat can be separated out from the rest of the blood using high-speed centrifugation. To further isolate lymphocytes from other types of white blood cells, a method called density gradient centrifugation can be used. Fikel and Percol are examples of two products used for density gradient centrifugation. To perform density gradient centrifugation, the isolated buffy coat or diluted whole blood are layered over the product. The tube is then spun in a high-speed centrifuge and the contents are separated out as shown in the picture. Any remaining red blood cells are pelleted to the bottom of the tube. In this case, the phycol is on top of the red blood cells. The peripheral blood mononuclear cells, or PBMCs, which is the fraction containing lymphocytes, are then layered on top of the phycol and can be removed from the tube. Centrifugation separates blood components based on density. The most dense items will go to the bottom of the tube upon spinning, and the least dense will move toward the top of the tube. DNA is less dense than protein. Since red blood cells have no nucleus and therefore no DNA, they are mostly protein and are the most dense blood component. PBMCs have one nucleus and are of medium density. Another type of white blood cell, the polymorphonuclear cell, have multiple nuclei and therefore are least dense. Many tissues also contain some immune cells. For example, the spleen has a very large percentage of immune cells. However, other organs may contain immune cells as well. To begin isolation of immune cells from tissue, the tissue must first be broken up to separate the cells. This can be achieved either using a chemical method, such as collagenase, or a physical method, such as passing the cells through a filter. After the cells have been disrupted, a method such as FICL can be done to further isolate lymphocytes. In the group of peripheral blood mononuclear cells are two major cell types, 
the lymphocytes, and the monocytes and dendritic cells, or DCs. Lymphocytes can be separated from the monocytes and DCs. Lymphocytes remain in solution when cultured, whereas monocytes and DCs will adhere to the culture flask. By incubating PBMCs for several hours, the non-adherent lymphocytes can then be separated from the adherent monocytes and DCs. 